If you're wondering where Random Review was on Monday, we had an illness in the family to handle. If you were wondering where Random Review was on Wednesday, I had an equipment failure as a bulb that was supposed to last 2,000 hours made it about 14. That was not a pleasant experience. It's also why the lighting looks a little bit different today because I had to go back to some old lamps with some new bulbs and it might look a little bit weird for a couple weeks while I wait for replacements. But hey, we're back in business now, back to business as usual, and we are talking a random figure from the history of Transformers, this one being Scoop from Transformers Generations. This I have quite an affinity for, because this is one of the toys that survived my childhood, or rather the G1 was, of course. And it seems of strange joys, like of all the target masters to do for generations. Scoop? Really? <laughs> like, that's so left field. Like, it's not even like they were going to make him a Constructicon, because they had a big Devastator on the way the, uh, the next year. But as you can see, big payloader in orange rather than what you would typically see a construction vehicle in being the green of the Constructicons. Nice size, nice solid look to him. Well, solid look until you look down and realize how much, uh, how much cabbage there is there. I did do some research and there are a few that look a little bit similar. I think there's a little bit extra, uh, a little bit more than there typically would be as far as open space, but hey, it's not so unrealistic, but it does look quite nice. If a bit orange dominant, the first thing you're going to notice is pretty much everything on him is solid orange. There's very few paint apps or spots where it's been broken up. There's the black of the wheels as well as all the pistons and uh, hydraulics and such here in the front. But for actual paint apps, you get a little bit of gray in the back, a little bit of gray on the sides, and that would be it. The G1 scoop had a bunch of sticker detail in this mode. He had a scoop that was yellow, and apparently this was originally planned to be yellow. As you can see, that didn't make it to production. But what we do have here is something that I will admit, while it does look kind of plain, it is very reminiscent of a real-life payloader. So at least it has that going for it. It also has a few other interesting details going for it. I mean, for instance, it's pretty well molded. If you look on this side... Uh, detail that it's only on this side, so they did a little bit of effort to make it asymmetrical. The ladder going all the way up to the driver's seat, as well as some pretty heavy detailing going through the rear section that will become the front of his legs. One of the details that stands out is the translucent, uh, the translucent cab for the driver where you can actually see Scoop's head poking through and looking out the windshield. Now, this is something I go back and forth on. It really depends on the toy and the character, whether or not this bugs me or whether or not I think it's a cute little addition. And this one, I'm going with cute little addition because in the G1 toy, that's also where Scoop's head ended up. If that toy had been translucent in the cab as well, it would have looked exactly the same. So I'm giving this one a pass. This works. So, yeah, Scoop himself, not a whole lot going on. He rolls very well because of very large wheels. And you do have some playability because the hinges and the Scoop do raise as well as adjust the bucket itself. There is another hinge here for transformation, so it does get a little bit broken up if you're not careful. And there's another hinge up there that uh, really likes to move. But you do have... Uh, you do have some range of motion going for you if you want it. You also have a ton of ports that you probably noticed, so we should probably get something in here to match those. So, let's bring in the Target Master Partners. Behold, this is Hole Punch and Tracer. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Caliburst, stupid trademarks. These are the Target Master Partners, and man, they got a significant upgrade. This is one of the things that kind of surprised me why Scoop was chosen. If I can find what I did with it. Because Scoop wasn't one of those large-scale Target Masters that was first released. He was one of the later ones that came with much smaller partner figures. Now, this isn't the G1 Tracer or anything. It's just it's one from another, but it's the same size as Tracer was. And it's literally just two pieces of plastic with a pin. Like, extremely simple. Definitely got an upgrade in that department. These guys are fully painted with full sculpts along the face, 
everything in the chest in detail, he looks like a neat little robot in and of himself, and does come with ball jointed shoulders with much range going up and down and a little bit outward. So both of them do stand up pretty well. I tend to like Hole Punch a little bit better. The orange of his face lets the detail show a little better. I like the hoses going through the chest. It just more or less looks like a more solid little character. But hey, that's not really what they are for. They are supposed to be his accessories, and they transform exactly the same way. So we flip up one gun, flip the arms back, they pin into position, flip down the handle, gun one. Do the exact same thing. Barrel, arms, handle, gun two. And there's a little bit more, but we'll get to that. So you'll notice there are six ports all throughout his vehicle mode to where you can mount whichever figure you want in whichever socket. And it works out fairly well. Now these down here don't get used quite as much because the handles are long enough to pay are just long enough to peg into them. But they do drag and grind on the ground that way. So better to leave those till later. Can peg in here on the side of the legs though. So you do have some options for the way they get displayed. And if you want something just a bit beefier, you can alter these transformations just a wee bit. Hole puncher opens up, you'll find a tab slot in the back. Plug in and boom, just like that, you have a super weapon that combines the two. And this does work pretty well as a mounted weapon, but it also makes a pretty solid looking weapon when you get scoop into robot mode. So let's go ahead and do that as well, shall we? Mm -hmm, I think we shall. All right, so it's a pretty simple transformation. I'm going to start by just undoing a few pegs to get everything started. The legs do the traditional, just flip out. The feet come down, which I kind of like how they do this because it's, it makes the feet look a little bit more solid overall. Split the legs. Now we come up here. The scoop is going to go all the way to the back, open up the hood, cab section rather. Hinge these arms down into place. Torso comes down. You can rotate these into place like there and right there. That'll hold everything together like so. Move the arms down into position. Flip out the hands. And with all that done, just fold up everything to create this... Uh, little backpack of parts like so or if you want to f figure out some other way of uh, cramming all that together you're more than welcome to come up with your own little way of accordioning it all on two scoops back but that's how I'm going to leave it because I believe that is the official mode because hey I don't ever screw anything up I always show the real mode that my friends is scoop in his robot mode Looking quite good. The nice thing about being so orange dominant in one mode is all the extra color popping out in his robot mode really makes it a stark change and really does do a good job of making him look like a very transformed character, even though he is using a lot of the vehicle mode bulk to create the robot mode. You guys should know by now, I quite like when they do that. Looking at the head sculpt, invoke it. There we go. He's looking quite good. I'm kind of a man. He's a little bit more stern than I would rem I would call uh, someone named Scoop. But for the most part, it works out pretty well, I think. Now, uh, there is a, a bit of discrepancy in his design if you compare him to the G1 toy. Which, uh, guess what? We can do. You can see here he's got much larger eyes, bigger visor, much more rounded head toward the top. And while some of the details are similar, the new artist and the new sculpt does take quite a few liberties. Aside from the fact that his face here is white and his entire head is supposed to be yellow. But hey, it's a new scoop for a new era. You know what a lot of people thought, and I'll go ahead and pull this back so you can see the torso as well. A lot of people thought this was going to be an Armada Scavenger repaint at some point. The vehicle mode matches, and, well, it doesn't have treads, but close enough. But the torso is similar, the head is similar. It really wouldn't have taken much to get a decent homage out of it, especially if one of the Target Masters became his Minicon. But that didn't exactly happen. Even in Japan, where he saw Constructicon colors, they didn't go that route. So it's a big missed opportunity as far as I'm concerned. 
But onto the toy itself, you can see those little hits of gray have now intermixed with the orange a lot better, and now he's got a lot of yellow, adding in his traditional secondary color, along with more hits of blue on the feet and the chest. It all makes for a very nice color palette. Very, very warm colors, you know, very, uh, very energetic, which you don't normally get out of a construction vehicle. It's one thing I like about the non-Constructicon construction vehicles, is they tend to... Because you're so used to seeing them in green, they tend to really stand out. Uh, the toy itself, very well proportioned. He does look very beefy and powerful. And as you can see, aside from the scoop itself being uh, kind of out of place and just hanging off his back, very clean built. But then again, that's uh, pretty much par for the course. Comparing him to his G1 counterpart, he does have quite a few of the details the same. A lot of the shapes are the same and everything's in very similar positions. You even get where his chest details come from on the original toy stickers. So I don't think they did such a bad job. Some designer really loved Scoop as a kid. And that's the only reason I can explain having such an obscure character getting a brand new toy in Generations. It does add, but it does add quite a bit of variety and unpredictability to the line, doesn't it? So let's go into the articulation rundown. We do have a ball joint in the neck, so he Rotates fully all the way around. I do have the, uh, the translucent ball socket warning on his head. That concerns me. But hey, it does let you light pipe because that's worth possibly losing his head over time. The torso hinge can also be used for uh, articulation in the shoulder. It does have a funny cut to it, so you do need that to get the arm moving outward. But it can be used in some interesting ways at least and does provide full range of motion for the shoulder. There is a bicep rotation. The wrist fold out, so no wrist rotation. We do have a waist at the full 360 degree rotation capable there. We do have ball joints in the hips that work out pretty well, as well as a thigh swivel just below. You get kind of a double knee by accident because of how the transformation works, so you do have that if you want it, but keeping the legs solid, you're stuck to the 90 degree. So he does all the essential stuff and plus some of the stuff like waist joints and such that kind of get skipped every now and then. But I think he makes quite the poseable little guy, which actually works really well considering as a target master, you'd expect him to be a gunner. And this is one of the things that works out pretty well for him. The original G1 scoop could not hold his target master partners. So this already is a pretty significant upgrade from his original form. But he goes one step further. Aside from the fact that he still has the ports down here in the bottom, which allow you to, you know, plug in anywhere you want, basically, he still has these ports on the sides, which in vehicle mode did not do us very good. The reason they're included is because this is how he had to hold on to his Target Master partners on the original G1 toy. And while the sockets are quite tight it does allow you to mount his weapons the way he did originally so that is a nice little bit of playability and i do like that they allowed for that contingency not just content with letting him hold his weapons properly but hold them as improperly as he used to as well that my friends is target master scoop from the generations line i think it is a fantastic upgrade Aside from a few small quibbles in accuracy and the fact I really think the vehicle mode needed that extra hit of yellow that for some reason got removed before production. It's a little labor of love. Clearly someone at Hasbro really had a thing for Scoop. Otherwise, I really don't think something like this could have made it to the shelves. And I am impressed that Hasbro is willing to go to obscure lengths like this and not just stick to the first four years where the transformers in order to get some of its new toys he's a very welcome addition and a very very solid toy